So in this video, I will be quickly showing how uh, I was able to install the Ryzen AI software on my brand new mini PC provided by AMD, um, which is housing an MPU and how it, I was able to train some data using the Onyx architecture on the AMD um, computer. And note, this is not a tutorial, but I will leave all the documentation in the description. And the data I will be training is from a partner, Genesky. So thank you to them for providing us with the data. So briefly, uh, I wish uh, just give you a little heads up on my specs. So in this case, we're in this um, mini PC, which is a UW, uh, UW790 Pro. Um, we have a Ryzen 9 7940 HS with a Radeon 780 um, graphics. Uh, with the RAM, we are housing 32 gigabytes. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And note, this um, computer has an MPU. Now, for those of you who don't know what an MPU is, an MPU is basically a kind of brand new type of technology. It's called a neural processing unit. And what that essentially is, it's more powerful than a CPU because they can run concurrent uh, neural processing data instead of uh, single line data. This is very useful for training data faster, like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, and compared to a CPU, it is a lot faster as because like, like I said, uh, a CPU is just a central processing unit, which is just processing uh, the amount of cores. But in an MPU, we're running a concurrent amount of cores, unlike a CPU, where it can only mainstream a certain amount of cores. So that's just a brief overview of uh, the difference between an MPU and a CPU, and that's why we're using an MPU to do most of our training. Another thing is um, we will be using the Onyx runtime. Now, Onyx is a open neural network exchange, and basically what that is, is it's able to combine a bunch of different softwares like Py uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, or any other AI software, and running a single algorithm, um, it can it's able to train all that data uh, and storing it. So similar to PyTorch, where it stores it as a PTX file, we're storing it as an Onyx file that can be called. Um, and some of the main benefits about the Onyx runtime is it's very um, it's it can run with the Ryzen AI software, which is a software that we will be using to house the Onyx as well as all the training AI, and it's very efficient um, when it comes to running on MPUs. Now, I mentioned Ryzen AI software a couple times, um, and basically the Ryzen AI software, uh, not this, uh, if I can pull it up, hold on, sorry. Uh, the Ryzen AI software is using the Onyx uh, model, and it basically we also do an extra step called quantalizing. Now, when we quantalize this model, it gives us like that extra layer of flow. Um, and when we deploy this model to an actual um, like a system that's on the low end hardware. So, for instance, we're, this is a very high end hard hardware. And we're, after we train it, all we have to do is send the person this Onyx file and they can run this AI as smoothly as they want on a low end system, as well as after the quantalization. We use something called an int 8, which is a uh, numerical type of data. And this is uh, help. This is to help with different execution uh, executions, as well as it, it works with other providers. Now, uh, we're, we, of course, have an MPU, but I will also do a, be, a, be doing a comparison with the CPU. So uh, just a quick overview of how I installed it. Um, you will need Visual Studio uh, Visual Studio 2019 for this to work, as well as you will need CMake and uh, con uh, Conda or uh, Anaconda. And just to show you, I've had it installed. Um, this is in a tutorial, but there is the complete documentation I followed down here, uh, down in the description, as well as I've also installed the IPU or MPU driver, uh, as well. Also, in this video, I will be saying IPU a lot, but basically it's the same thing as an MPU. It's just a different way of saying it. So here, as you can see, after I list it, we can see that I currently have the Ryzen AI um, 
so, uh, fi uh, software installed properly. So if I were to activate that, you can see it success. Uh, sorry. You can see it successfully uh, switches to the environment and we're able to use it. So uh, we've been participating in an AMD Hackster event, which is this year's 2023. And um, the theme for our, our category is to create some type sort of AI. So what we have published is a gene recognition system. And it's very uh, basic right now, but basically uh, we're training it off a database provided by Janice Skill, and I've put basically the database into a genome column and then the disease column to tell you. So the AI, uh, which I've we've developed, is going to read the CSV code, and then it will reprocess the data into the different categories like the disease and the genome number. And we're using PyTorch to train this. For now, but then eventually, like I said, we're using Onyx, which I will show you how to quantize the model and everything. Uh, then we define the neural network module. Um, this is very important for Onyx because without a neural network module, Onyx won't run because it's basically like a uh, it's it's an open net, uh, neural network exchange model. Uh, we train the data using PyTorch, and then eventually we optimize and initialize it. And then we export into an Onyx format. Now, exporting just to Onyx is very basic, and this won't give you that layer of um, communication as well as production. And this is exactly why we uh, we also here we also quantize the model because that, like I described before, will give it that extra layer of int eight calibration as well as everything else. So, just to go over, we can copy this code and paste it into our um, code here for the runtime. So let's remove this part because we are not exporting. And here, uh, once the code is inputted, we can uh, sorry. Uh, we can run the actual code and take a look. So here, after I run it, as you can see, this is a perfect example. This with just PyTorch training, it's taken a really, really long time for it to actually get running. So here I have some sample codes. So we enter this. Now this code is a lower version of what I'm going to actually show you. But as you can see, we're able to get a prediction value and then output that. So now we're going to export this to Onyx. Um, and there's not much to go over. This is just exporting the previous file and splitting up into batch sizes, if it's a big size, with an input size and then putting it out, exporting it as a .onyx file. Next, we quantize the model into an int8 um, type thing. I'm not extremely sure because I'm not still uh, not an expert at this, but if you want to learn more, they all, I will link the documentation here. So after it's been trained, we get a successful model here. We can run it on the CPU. Uh, with a random number so here on the CPU, and then we can run it on the MPU or IPU. Now, by looking at the results, you can see that we cut down the time dramatically. Now, noting this, this is only like a couple lines of database, like max 50 or 60. And then think about if this was a thousand or two thousand or a really large scale project, which most AI companies do. 50,000, how much time we would save based just on training. So these are all the pluses of um, the MPU running the software. But now coming to our latest code, which I will show you here, I will run this code. And all this this right now is exported to Onyx for us to run. So we'll give it a second. All right, as you can see, the Onyx model is successfully exported. Now we must um, activate it into our Ryzen AI environment. So I'm just going to list up info here. So here is the name, Conda environment, and then Conda activate. 
Oh, oops. Alright, so now we are in the environment. And as you can see, we have our trained Onyx model here. Now, in order to run this Onyx model, we all we have to provide to the user now, who is the uh, other end, is a very simple code. Um, because it's been trained, so now all we have to do here is I'm pulling the trained quantilized model, or the trained model here. Here we pull the trained model. Uh, we start a Onyx um, runtime interface, which is to open this Onyx model. And then we ask the imp uh, user for the genome 9D and prepare the output and extract it. So in this case, it's very simple. We're still working on the actual output. But here, just a demonstration. Uh, after I run this code, you'll see how fast it is. See, it's already loaded. And that's the benefits of already tra uh, training it with Onyx. And based off the training, you also see how fast it is. But in the actual, if you had a lower end machine, um, it would still be really fast after it's been trained with Onyx. So here I'm going to give it a genome number and we should be expecting the liver transport, uh, transplant output. As you can see, we have liver transp uh, transplant. Now I can grab any data from the full V1, but I'm, I'm not allowed to fully disclose this CSV file. Here, uh, another example, we could put in the genome number for healthy. And as you can see, we have a healthy output. So that's basically everything to cover with our project currently uh, so far, as well as if you want to learn how to install it, everything documentation will be in the uh, description, as well as some benchmarks for our current testing to compare the CPU as well as the MPU. So thanks for watching, guys.